By now, you probably have heard of a condition called fungal acne. And although this terminology has gained popularity the past few years, it's a condition that's been around for a fairly long time, and it's something I see not infrequently as a dermatologist. And the term fungal acne is actually quite confusing, and in fact, it's a misnomer. So today, I'm going to talk all about hideous form folliculitis, aka fungal acne, what it is, how does one get it, and how to best treat it at home if you're not able to see a dermatologist. Hi, my name is Dr. Jenny Liu. I'm a board certified dermatologist and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you enjoy learning about common skin conditions that a dermatologist treats, as well as learning about skincare, hair care, and product review, I would love it if you can consider subscribing to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. So fungal acne, as I alluded to, it's really a misnomer because number one, it's not true acne, even though it may look like it and sometimes even will confuse us as a dermatologist, but it's not true acne. And two, it's not really truly of fungal origin. What it is, is caused by an organism called Pidiosporum, which is an yeast that likes to live on our skin. In particular, it really has affinity for the sebum-rich sites on our skin, so the oil glands. Now, Pidiosporum is also known as Malassezia, and this name may sound familiar to you because Malassezia is a family of yeast that we know cause few other common skin conditions, namely tinea versicolor, which is actually the exact same organism that causes Pidiosporum folliculitis, so Malassezia furfur to be exact. But seborrheic dermatitis or dandruff is also caused by this similar type of Malassezia yeast, but has a predilection for parts of our skin like the scalp. Now, just to be clear, this yeast is on all of our skin, but it's only in certain vitrules that if it becomes problematic, presents with skin findings and skin conditions like seborrheic dermatitis, tinea versicolor, and pediosporum folliculitis. So these conditions, again, are not contagious, but there are certain individuals who are just more genetically inclined in getting these conditions. And on top of that, certain external and environmental factors may increase one's risk. I know we don't think of diabetes typically as an immunosuppressive state, but poorly controlled blood sugar can certainly increase one's risk. Other things includes a long-term use of oral antibiotics. And here again, you're just disrupting the natural skin flora, the skin microbiome. Because if you think of it, our skin, everything is in balance, right? For things to work in a healthy functional state. So if you are removing the bacteria in the skin, that may least that may lead to yeast overgrowth. And certainly individuals who are on long-term antibiotics for treatment of acne have a higher risk risk of developing pediosporum folliculitis. And other habits too, like for example, being really aggressive for cleansing, using the wrong cleanser, you know, cleansing the skin multiple times throughout the day. Again, that is just an increased risk of disrupting the skin's natural microbiome, natural flora, and also living in a hot and humid environment, wearing clothing that's very tight, um, that can lead to friction, and also using, along the same line, using more occlusive skincare products can all be risk factors. Now, all of these are just risk factors. It's not like if you do any of these, you are going to for sure get pediosporum folliculitis because a lot of it too, genetics do play a role. But certainly the common triggers that I often will see patients when they come in with pediosporum folliculitis is either being on prednisone for a long time or being on antibiotics for a long time. So what does pediosporum folliculitis look like and how does it differ from acne? Well, first and foremost, we call or would describe uh, pediosporum folliculitis as these monomorphous or, or all looking the same bumps. They're usually tiny, you know, two to three, maybe four millimeters that sometimes are a little more inflamed or red and will kind of be scattered on the trunk, on the chest, on the upper back. And often you can find them along the hairline as well, but like the forehead, the temple. They can be itchy. Usually acne is not as itchy, but we're really distinguished from folliculitis from true acne is the lack of comedones, so blackheads and whiteheads. And that's really the definition of acne is, you know, there are different types of acne, but really regardless of what an individual have, as far as like the types of acne, there always is the presence of blackheads and whiteheads. And with pediosporum folliculitis, you don't have that. And sometimes it can be kind of tricky and sometimes we are also fooled. And if we're really not sure, often a skin biopsy or like a skin scraping can help us to figure out and we may see findings on under the microscope or even better yet the biopsy where we will actually find the yeast kind of around the hair follicles and that is truly what defines pediosporum folliculitis. Okay so you think you may have pediosporum folliculitis you know what should you be doing? Well first and foremost the most important thing is to identify any underlying triggers that may be playing a role and again see a dermatologist for proper diagnosis if possible. But here are a few things that you can try at home that are relatively benign and I actually recommend 
recommend to my patients as like a maintenance regimen. Now keep in mind that true pediospirum folliculitis, because often that yeast is deeper in the hair follicles, topical treatments, meaning what you put on your skin, aren't going to be as effective. The most effective are going to be prescription oral antifungal anti-yeast medications that we give, usually a course of like a month or so. But if you're not able to get into see a dermatologist, here is what you can try. So what you want to do is go to your drugstore and find an anti-dandruff shampoo, namely with the following ingredients, ketoconazole, zinc perithium, or selenium sulfide. So you're probably thinking, wait, isn't this the same thing that I would use for dandruff? And you're exactly right, because it's a similar family of yeast. We are hoping that these anti-yeast ingredients may also offer some improvement for the pediospirum folliculitis. And what you want to do is you want to use it like a cleanser on your face if the pediosporum folliculitis is on the face or as a body wash. Leave it on for maybe five minutes or so and rinse off. And you don't want to be doing this daily because the shampoos are usually pretty drying. I would say, you know, three, four times a week is sufficient. And you want to give it time. Give it at least a month or so. If you're still not having improvements, then this is where I see dermatologist is going to be very helpful. Now, I actually also love this shampoo trick in individuals who suffer from repeated bouts of tineal versa color, especially in the summertime. You can use it as treatment and maintenance and prevention. So kind of lathering that shampoo on the body where you have it, and that usually can take care of most mild cases of tineal versa color. Now, if you're not a big fan of using shampoo on your face and body, or just find it too irritating, one cleansing bar that I've talked about in the past that's fairly gentle, but also contains 1% zinc perithion is from Vanna Cream. And that one you can certainly check out and you will lather it just like you would with any normal cleansing bar. Leave it on your skin for a few minutes and rinse off. And for most people, I find this to be a lot more gentle than using the shampoo. So it is certainly something you could use on a daily basis as tolerated. And lastly, just be more mindful with your skincare routine. So if you are using really harsh cleansers or overly cleansing, consider dialing back and using a more gentle, creamy cleanser. You want to make sure that you are moisturizing your skin by not using anything too occlusive. And if you are a fan of slugging with petrolatum, consider just holding that off for the time being until this gets better. If you wear a lot of tight clothing, maybe consider switching to more loose fitting clothing and made with material that's more breathable or more readily able to absorb sweat. And ultimately remember, it's going to take some time. And like I said earlier, it's going to be best treated with prescription medication. So if you feel like you've been doing this for some time, a few months, and you're still not seeing results, then see a dermatologist and we can better help you. All right, guys. So that's a quick video on pediospirum folliculitis or fungal acne. Please let me know in a comment comments below if you enjoyed these short series where I talk about one skincare condition, the causes, and how to tackle it at home if you're not able to see a dermatologist. Because if you do, I would love to continue making more of those. Or if you have a topic in mind that you would like me to talk about, also leave them in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.